Welcome to the Talking Therapy Centre podcast. I'm Jen. And I'm Bethy. And today we're going to talk about what helps resource us and deal with struggle. Because here's the thing, sometimes in life there are difficult circumstances, there are struggles that no amount of mindset changes um, or techniques are going to change. And so actually what can be really helpful is for us to look at how can we support ourselves within that. Yeah, it's really important that, and I noticed that this is coming up for me very much. I'm in the middle, well, not in the middle, I'm almost at the end of my master's degree, so we've got all the words, all the exams, all the, and um, I am noticing that I am in that period of struggle, and yeah. I'm really needing to take care of myself. Uh, uh, so you're in the middle of your master's at the moment and you've got deadlines on deck, you've got deadlines. work accounts on deck, you've got forms yeah. on deck. Mm. Yeah. As much as you might be able to, you know, look at productivity tools and strategies and techniques, mm. at the end of the day there are still those things to do on them to get in on time. Yeah. So at the minute, you know, how are you how are you taking care of yourself in all of that? Because yeah, that's that's a lot on deck. Self-care for me, I've noticed, it does slip in times of this, like when in these stressful times. And for me, I really need to get clear on what it is that I need. For example, eating well, exercising, but also spending time in doing things that lift and excite me and Um, Even if it's for half an hour, like I am one of those people that will stick music on and go dance around the kitchen while I'm cooking because I know that feels good. That feels really good. And that feeds into that self-care, especially in these times of stress. Uh, Because I I know we can often feel like we don't want to do those kind of things. We don't want to go and work out. We just want to kind of... Yeah, cozy up yeah. And, 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 and go quite in, inwards, which is not to say that that's a bad thing. Um, I just know for myself, with the kind of personality I am, I am a very extroverted person. I gain energy from doing things and being around people. Right. So I start the day, I wake up in the day, and for me to gain energy, I need social interaction. So what we're identifying here is that when you've got things on deck, when we've all got things on deck, stress is up, it's really important for us to get clear on what are helpful and meaningful ways to take care of ourselves because ways that are meaningful and nurturative to you might be really different for me because I'm more on the introvert Mm -hmm. spectrum. Even though when I'm with people, I'm quite um, out there, I actually need to recharge by myself. Yeah. So you're saying that for you, to help resource you with struggle, you need some social interaction? Yeah. This, I think this is relevant. The, there's that um, analogy of an introverted person wakes up in the morning with five coins. And I just say five. And with each interaction, they lose a coin. But then, and then at the end of the day, they go back to bed and that's their recharge. You know, when they go back into it, that's Mm -hmm. their recharge. But for an extroverted person, we wake up with nothing and every social interaction we gain, we gain a coin. And I use the word coin, I don't know where coin has come from, but it just acknowledging how different and what our self-care needs are. That's huge. I'm having a bit of a light bulb moment. Like, how big is that, right? That if if there are those differences around where we gain energy and leak energy, if you will, or what mm-hmm. gives us energy, that's why um, self-care and self-nurturance and resourcing ourselves is such an individual journey. And I think when we look at magazines, innocently it can often say things like, run yourself a bubble bath. Light some candles. Now I'm I know I can see you do it because I'm all up for the bubble bath. Oh, I'm down for a bubble bath. But for, for for some people that that really might just leave them with a lot of time in a head which is spinning over and actually 
something <laughs> different yeah. might work for them, like actually a bigger restaurant might be what they need. Mm. Yeah, and that I've noticed that that is more me. Right. I, I'm very I, this high energy per. I'm a high energy person that needs explosive aggression sometimes, and I don't mean aggression. Aggression can be taken in uh, have aggression. That word has negative connotations but for me aggression is power and energy for something now i noticed that i'm not meeting a care need right. because i am exhausted i'm exhausted mentally emotion emotionally and yeah I just, what's the need then what's my need mm. what is my need right now oh sleep you know what well naturally yeah I'm, I'm feeling this need to be held like cuddles mm. ah! <laughs> <laughs> no, so you like the you, you, joke of the part that you, you feel can you say more about being held like what what do you mean by that I think because I'm so, on, on this power track I'm on this train that is so fast at the moment and I feel like I'm like half hanging on um it's kind of a someone just to pull you back into the train it's like you're all right you're here you're still on the track you just need you know you like just, grounding on um, grounding yeah you need some grounding I mean, yeah it needs some grounding yeah okay <laughs> we're doing live therapy here on our podcast but, but say sometimes that is what our, you know, our conversations. As therapists, and myself as a training therapist as well, having our own therapy is really important and modelling that for people because therapists need therapists. And ther yeah. therapists also need to focus on their self-care. Um, you know, we, we don't take it for granted that we know everything. It's something that we really need to work on constantly. Absolutely. It's a daily journey. And that's not to say that we know everything either. No. No. You know? I think you pointed to something really important there, Bethan, about when we struggle, we're going through difficult times. You know, that might be a family member or someone close to us um, is seriously unwell. We've got care needs. Mm -hmm. We've got exams mm -hmm. on that. We have maybe have financial difficulties. Maybe there's our own physical health struggles and relationship breakdowns. Yeah. You know, all sorts. Yeah. And in this channel, we are hopefully going to speak to some of those things in a way that's helpful, that might lead to some change. Yeah. But I think the piece that we wanted to look at today was acknowledging that sometimes that's where we are in life and we might not be able to take that away but we're looking at how we can nurture and hold ourselves in that and I think you pointed to something really important which is this idea of holding and I think many of us I certainly do is I think of physical holding and for some people that's what they need but actually um, I think this idea of holding us being held and being supported is really super important and as therapists for instance in order for us to hold for us to be with and support other people we have a clinical supervisor which is holding us so it's like a triangle and so what might be really helpful for people to reflect on is to think about if you're struggling right now and you're holding something or dealing with something or someone else like who is holding you in that and if there isn't someone there, like what would help you, or is there something else that would help hold you in that? Like, so one of the things that we can look at then, when it comes to resourcing ourselves with struggle, is what's helping hold and support us, and that might be other people, that might be community, that might be a self care practice. Um, how else do I think about meaningful self care? I don't. <laughs> Well, what's meaningful self care for you? What 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 comes up for you um, in your own practices? Okay, meaningful self care. Yeah. So, like honesty moment. You pointed to it before. That I'll be really honest. That when things get quite stressful and I have a lot on, my most often Andy can be I. I innocently forget all of the things that are really helpful to do at times, yeah. so I can. 
fall into like some overworking, I'm not going to sleep at the right time, I'm having a lot of caffeine and I'm not exercising. Mm. Thankfully, by me working with people on, on their journey, it does help bring more consciousness with myself. But I wanted to I wanted to be real with our audience that like I'm not sat here on the sofa saying I've got it mixed. I still can struggle with this self-care journey at times. But I think for me, the first point is recognizing that um, things are slipping. Mm -hmm. And I liked what you said before about those basics. And I like to think of a plant almost, like, am I watering myself? Mm -hmm. Am I nourishing myself? Because quite often if I'm really stressed, I will tend towards the caffeine, the sugar, and the pot. That's me where I feel. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and, and actually, yeah, what I know to be helpful is when I bless myself, and that is the way I describe it, it's a blessing to bless myself with some nutrient-dense foods, or if I am going to have the crisps and I am going to have the caffeine, like, drop the mental self-criticism about it, because it's mm. just me in this moment trying my best to get through a hard time. So if I'm going to do it, enjoy it. Okay? So offering yourself, like, the space to enjoy it and then also like recognizing that where compassion is needed yeah like, it's i mean it's really easy to take care of ourselves when we feel good yeah. and when you said it's when it's recognizing when we're slipping mm-hmm. when we're going down that slope and then all of a sudden <laughs> like for myself right now i'm in this i feel like i'm in a bit of a ditch mm-hmm. in a way of I know that I'm not looking after myself to the capacity that I know that is good for me. Maybe, I mean, uh, eating well, sleeping well, and really, you know, those basics are really important. Mm. But you're struggling with those right now. It's not that I'm, it's, it's not that I'm struggling with them. I think it's that I'm not paying attention my mind is so focused on something that I'm forgetting. Yeah. I can easily, if I'm in this state, I can easily wake up and do the whole day. I, I, I won't, I might, I might forget to eat. Right. Just, just because I'm so... You're hyper-focused. Hyper-focused, but that doesn't mean that is, that's how, that's not. Ideally, you know, having the capacity to look after myself in those moments is... Um, would be beneficial because at the moment I notice I'm feeling quite I'm I'm on that train to be burned out. Mm. I am burning out. Yeah, you can feel that. I can feel that. I can feel it in like like it's like a cloud here. Mm. Uh, almost like a tiredness. Um but it's a mental tiredness. Mm. I'm physically awake and able to do things. I'm here, I'm sat on the sofa, I'm talking to you. Um but when it comes down to writing and making sense of things mm. There's a cloudiness. Yeah, it's just like yeah. So maybe what one of the things is to be helpful here is to um, <laughs> is to go. <laughs> one of the things that might be helpful helpful then when we think about acknowledging that we're in a struggle. Let's not try and put a nice little gratitude list around it. Although that might be something we want to speak to because I'm all up for bringing gratitude to things actually, but I'm not up for for me. Covering difficult times and positive mantras I, for me doesn't isn't necessarily what it's right. like. It might be just some. pasting over. I, yeah. I resonate with that. Yeah, that, yeah. that for me um, can feel unhelpful and disavowing of what mm-hmm. someone's experiencing. So yeah. what you were mentioning there was it's really important to acknowledge sometimes that we are struggling and that we have got a lot on that we can assess how much are we feeling able to engage in meaningful self-care in whatever way that's helpful to us, who and how is holding us and supporting us. But also, it comes in every episode, the importance of compassion and acceptance for ourselves that even if we recognise that we're not sleeping properly, we're not eating properly, we're not doing an exercise, we're not connecting with our friends, even though we know that would be helpful, we're not asking for support, can we give ourselves a break that we are human beings in the soup just trying the best that we can? Mm-hmm. And in, from that place of compassion rather than criticism, like loading up on all of those sugars that I should be, I should be reaching out, I should be putting my caffeine down, I should be having an apple instead of Doritos. That place 
makes me just feel so much more restricted and so much more overwhelmed. So if nothing else, what I'm going to do is if I can bring some compassion and empathy and acceptance to the table, we're going to feel far more able to actually lean into something that's going to meaningfully support us in the middle of our living life. Mm. Something that I think, something that came up for me while you were speaking just then is that, okay, we can all, offering ourselves compassion rather than criticism, yeah, great. But how do we do that if it's not really, if that's not really modelled for us? Now that is really, I think that could be an episode actually. I think that's really helpful, yeah. That's such a helpful question because, yeah, that's like, yeah, people will often call me down, people are like, well, well, how, how do I be nice to myself when all I've ever known is speaking horribly mm-hmm. to myself? Like, how do I give myself permission not to be a perfectionist and just to do a, a good enough version when all I know is to stay up all night? Uh, um, I think that's where modelling can come, can become really important. Like, who in our lives can model that? Compassion to us, even if it's a YouTube thing, even if it's us on a podcast episode, hopefully. Like, yeah. if we don't know how to give it to ourselves, then maybe that's because it was never taught to us, maybe. So, who can teach us about that? That's what comes up for me. Well, I think that's a really important and helpful question. And I think it would be good for us to speak to that in an episode itself. Yeah. Well, maybe that can be the next episode then. How can we model, how can we give ourselves compassion? When we don't know how. When we don't, <laughs> don't, when we don't know how. Mm. Um, because even then, I mean, do we show compassion to others? Can we show compassion to others? Yeah. Because if you can, that is something, that's a really helpful question. If you're able to show compassion to others, but you're not to yourself mm. then that means the skill is there so it's not a skills deficit you know how to do it but there's it's a block a to giving to some resistance to giving to yourself yeah maybe around this the self-worth and the values that we place on ourselves yeah. feeling worthy of speaking nicely to ourselves but also seeing yeah. the value of doing that i think comes mm. up and comes up frequently in our conversations about i think so many of us try to motivate ourselves via harsh, negative, self-critical language. Like, I should be doing this. I need to just get my leap together. Mm. And I think we hope that if we can just speak to ourselves harshly enough, we'll sort of shake ourselves into things. Feels like a really angry parent. Yeah. Like, I I notice that that that's what comes up for me. And it keeps coming up, those those parent-child kind of uh, dynamics with myself. Um, I notice in those criticism moment, crit- critical moments, moments of self criticism, and I'm not saying it's my parents. Yeah. It's it's a parent version of me. That's what you've internalised. Well, yeah, and yes. Yeah, and yes, yes. <laughs> and and what's interesting though is that the clinical research shows, and maybe if we do, we're going to do a podcast episode on this, we could we could find the research. But what the clinical research shows is actually high levels of self criticism. And high levels of judgment of others as well. So when judgment is high of self and of other, our, capa- our desire to change is ramped up, but our capacity to change is lowered. So it's the so worst the capacity, outcome. Because yeah. you're capacity, so want to change, yeah. you can't. The capacity is linked to those resources. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the... What's this podcast about? So today we are looking at when life is a struggle, the struggle's not going anywhere, there's a lot on death. How do we take care of ourselves? In meaningful ways. Meaningful. Um, And one of the things we've identified is if nothing else, the words you say to yourself are the most important words you're ever going to hear. And the clinical research is very loud and clear on this, that high levels of self-criticism and judgment of others equates to stuckness and difficulty changing mm. whereas higher levels of self-compassion equate to more of a capacity to change and face challenging situations mm. and then we need to build up resilience there yeah. um, and i'm thinking about those levels of self-criticism mm. that i'm noticing as you're speaking that often that compassion to ourselves is something that 
maybe a lot of us did need support around because we haven't been modelled that that a relationship in, in where kindness to ourselves is really really important um, and just thinking about the working with my clients and that how high that level of self-criticism is and it's my hope with the kind of therapy I do deliver and that I provide at Johnson or Orange is nice to say cool yeah just to actually start to model a relationship which is accepting and non-judgmental and warm and compassionate and there's that's the massive thing about therapy is it when you arrive at therapy you think oh I want to get rid of this and this what I'm noticing is that offering conditions the therapeutic conditions of you know um, congruence unconditional proper regard empathy warmth all of those things is actually more facilitative than offering interventions and tools like how to get from A to B. Yeah. Because in that modelling of offering offering that in a relationship maybe opens a potential for that to offer to themselves. Yeah. And maybe those that self critical voice that we do have may the volume may turn down yeah. and recognising that there is a we can turn the volume up or turn the on button on our compassionate mm. voice, self compassion narrative. Yeah. Um so I think especially in moments like this, in times of stress, you I really like what you said about who is holding us. Mm. What support do we have? At the end of the day, we are relational beings. Yeah. We're not meant to survive by ourselves. No. And we learn about ourselves through others. So in times of stress, in times of difficult periods, focusing on the support that we do have around us. And all of that, I recognise that might be a little bit yeah. um, that maybe we feel like we don't have that there. Yeah. That can be part of the struggle for some people. That can be part of the struggle. Yeah, that there's a gap there. There's a gap there, and I mean, I recognise how much I need therapy mm -hmm. in times of stress, in times of like real crackdown or just broken, broken. Mm -hmm things like trying to manage that actually having a space where I can even if it's just a vomit yeah. like word vomit yeah just <laughs> to get out what's inside in, yeah. a, safe in a safe place where it's non-judgmental and that's really 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 facilitative and important and I notice that in some of my clients um that that is useful for that's really useful for them and and it will um that that thought process just stops right there um so in times of stress leaning on or finding support through therapeutic intervention whereby it's psychotherapy counseling um CBT life coaching, hypnotherapy, there's yeah. so many, isn't there? Yeah, of course, but to, to um, have that space for yourself, for myself. Really precious. Really precious. And in doing that, that may help us to be more compassionate towards ourselves. Um, what I'm taking away from our conversation is it's really important to acknowledge that sometimes life is really hard and it's a struggle 
and for for us to acknowledge that and sort of trying to plaster over that with platitudes and positive affirmations, even though positive affirmations work for someone, I think that's great. I think it's important to acknowledge the struggle. And then what I've taken is about relationships actually and about the relationship to ourself in the middle of that struggle in terms of how we speak to ourselves. Is it kind? Is it supportive? Is it accepting? Or are we full of those shoulds and self-criticisms? It's about, in terms of our relationship with ourselves, like how we're treating ourselves, like how we're nourishing our Are we a friend to ourselves? Yes, I like that. Like, are we being our friend to ourselves? Are we being a friend to ourselves in the middle of the struggle? And then, yeah, the second bit, I suppose, is like, that's the inner relationship. Like, what's the interpersonal relationship? What, like, what are the things, places, and people that are helping support me at the moment? And for some people, that might be part of the struggle. They might feel the lack of that, but that also may pinpoint an area that would be helpful to fill in in some way. Yeah. And what about you? In yeah. Yeah. Um I think what am I taking away from mm-hmm. today, I think, is for me is that in importance of the relationships we have with us. Like you just said, I really like when you said the relationship we have with ourselves. Not are we being a friend to ourselves, but then also those interpersonal relationships. You know, who who is who who are the people that are what is our support network? Yeah. Um and, and you've obviously brought it up, I'm quite conscious of the fact that so that's maybe a huge struggle and that's when services like our you know the talking therapy center this is where it's important to maybe reach out and have your space which mm-hmm. is for you yeah and i don't want to plug it really but like if anybody is noticing that they are struggling and recognizing that their social support network is maybe not there they need to maybe come to us um we offer free consultations just to do kind of understand a little bit more and take your therapy journey from there um because this can act as a part this will it will I, and I don't like to put the definites down there, but if you're open to it, if you if a person is open to it, then mm-hmm. therapy is a pillar in that support. Yeah, yeah. And you have your place from high or high water where you can come and have that time where you are listening to what bother what is bothering you and is on your heart and on your mind is an absolute priority. And I, and I think in a fast paced world, in a busy world. When you're struggling to have that space can be very precious and life changing. And I can speak to that both as a therapist and as a client because I still do a lot of conference therapy as well. Yeah, and I agree with that mm-hmm. totally. As we all therapists need therapists, mm-hmm. and yeah, I think also as a therapist, I learn a lot about myself and my clients, and oh. maybe the things that my clients may be experiencing. I'm like, ooh, yeah, I need to check in with that for myself absolutely uh, especially around in these moments of distress and this and yeah how can i check in with myself what self-care what am i lacking what am i needing and get to grips and focus on it do you things we've identified today the things that sleep would help you i need less. sleep sleep and rest and yeah, sleep and rest I'm, yeah i'm gonna take away I'm really mindful about moving my body in some way, whether that be walking mm. or whatever will be really, it, it, it never fails to help me, mm. but I'm not really doing it. So I'm going to take away from this that, um, yeah, even if it's five minutes a day, I'm going to commit to that. Yeah, I think I am going to have a dance this evening. Mm. I'm just going to go somewhere, start cooking, mm. put some music on and have a bit of a dance because that's that's where you're at that's where i'm at that's what i need that's what i need in this stress 
<laughs> well, I found that really interesting today, and I'll be we'll be really interested to hear what you take away from this, what you identified with, what you might do differently or continue to support you in the middle of your struggle. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to checking in at our next episode. And as we've said before, we're really open to if you've got any suggestions, topics that you'd like us to speak to please send them in. And hopefully, next week I'll have more sleep. <laughs> <laughs> she says, no, uh, on a serious note, yeah, um, I think, what is it, what do you guys do in those times of struggle? What do you lean towards? You know, we really want to, want to, let's make this a conversation. Let's make this a conversation. Let's start the discussion. Um, because it is important and if you have um, experiences of therapy you know um, just bringing that into the discussion as well Absolutely. because those experiences are also really important to talk about um, yeah so we look forward to checking in with you next time here's to Salka and meaningful stuff meaningful stuff